Hello everyone, my name is Ray Kanopka and in this session we're going to take an in-depth look at actions and action lists and most importantly how to use them effectively in our applications. In order to understand actions uh, and how and when we need to use them, we first need to have an understanding of what problems and issues they were meant to solve, specifically user interface commands. Uh, and with respect to those, the enablement of those commands, uh, changing their enabled state, whether they're available or not, and the execution or the invocation of those commands um, to perform certain behaviors. So to start, we're going to review the traditional approach of implementing commands in our Delphi and C++ folder applications. Uh, dropping controls down, setting up event handlers, the usual fare. Um, we'll then take a look at converting that application into one that uses actions and action lists to get us some nice benefits. Uh, and we'll see those as we, we go through the demonstrations. Uh, once we do that, we're going to take a detailed look behind the scenes of actions and, and how they work, how they do their magic. Uh, we'll also uh, come across several guidelines to uh, the, the, the meat of this presentation that really help us to use actions effectively. Uh, because as it turns out, if in certain cases, if you do certain things, you can actually cause performance problems uh, and behavior problems in your applications. Uh, it's easy to rectify, but you need to be aware of them so that we avoid those problems. And the final section uh, in this session will be covering standard actions, or what I like to call custom actions. Uh, they're pre-built functionality in an action class that includes both the uh, enablements updating as well as the invocation of the actual behavior. So to get started, let's take a look at uh, an application I've created called a CD player, and it uses the traditional approach for implementing commands in the interface. And this is our sample CD player. 